Hey guys, uh, back again. So, yeah, this is going to be like, I think, part four now of the Gear Hidden Blade series that I've been doing. Um, just first of all, I wanted to say that uh, you guys have been really, really supportive of this project and like it's been totally awesome. Um, I'm really excited that we can kind of like go on this journey together of like concepts to finished products, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, you guys have been offering a lot of your ideas as well, which is really awesome, and uh, I just really like how this, this kind of series is, like, bringing everyone together, um, and we can all kind of share the journey of, like, watching something come to life, which is pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, this is this is pretty much going to be the last, well, the second last video um, before we do the final pro uh, product video, essentially. So, um, this is the completed model. In theory, everything should work. So obviously, uh, on the computer, things are different to when they're made in real life. So we'll see. Hopefully, there's not any issues. But if there is, um, I can obviously tackle those and, and get those figured out. Now, I have actually started um, making this, which is really interesting. Um, I'm not going to show you guys what it looks like in real life yet. I'm going to save that for the next episode. Um, but I've started printing off some of these parts and it looks like it's going to come together really, really nicely. So this will be the, the last look, um, before we go to the final version, cause I've, I've done a lot since the last episode as well. So yeah, let's, let's dive right into it. There's a few other things I'm going to show you in this video in regards to the hidden blades that I'm going to start selling. So obviously if you're following my Facebook page, which I encourage you all to do, I'm really active on there. Um, you'll see the hidden blades that I have announced that I'm going to be selling. So I'm just going to show a few product photos of those ones in this video so you guys can see what it looks like. And i um, also going to be going over a design idea for this one that I really liked. So, all right, let's jump into it. So essentially, this is what the, the completed model is going to look like. So if I just push this in to where it's going to sit. All right, we look from here. So this is what the hidden blade is going to look like. So you can see it's a little bit different to the dual action OTF one that um, I'll be selling, which is the version one. So really most of the stuff that I've done is the internal wheel system, which I'll show you in a second, and just the outer design components. So obviously uh, I've added in the arm straps now, so you can see we got uh, four of those, two at the front, two at the back. Uh, we've got the screw holes now, so they're all in there as well. Um, I've put the Raw Ice logo, Raw Ice Creations logo on the back, so that looks real nice. And then down here we have the the markings of the blade model. So obviously V2 uh, here, V2, so version 2 of the hidden blade that I'll be selling. Um, I'll show you the V1 photos, which will be available soon. Uh, then we have the, the Mark 1. So obviously this is the first uh, gear hidden blade that I've done. So it's the Mark 1. And then HB for hidden blade. So that's what all that stands for there. Um, I've tried to make it look fairly aesthetic. I think it looks really nice. Um, might change a few minor things here and there, but overall I'm pretty happy with this final product and how it's looking. So let's have a look on the inside to see what we have going on in here. I'll get rid of this one as well. Okay, cool. So this is the main difference. Obviously in the last part, I showed you the gear system or the gearbox. And I talked about how I was going to move the wheel inside of that solid piece of plastic at the back. So I've actually done that now in the model, which is what you can see here. Um, and I've also just kind of made the gearbox a little bit more sleek. So before it was just kind of a big rectangle in here, but now I've just kind of followed the curvature of the gears around. So it's a little bit more um, aesthetic looking on the inside and everything's nice and compact, which I really like. So obviously you guys know how the mechanism works by now, um, but this part really just kind of going to let you see what's actually happening in here. So really what we have is the arm and wheel at the back. Now, there was a little bit of confusion. Some people think uh, that the blade is just going to come out randomly, but, like, I don't... It's not going to happen. <laughs> um, and hopefully you see that in this video. But the, the wheel will not push the gears unless you pull the string and ring system. So you're not going to have this randomly coming out. Um, it's only going to be activated when you pull the ring system, okay? So uh, just get that clear for now. Uh, don't also worry about how this gear is interfering with this gear. I haven't moved that up because uh, I made a change, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, we got the, the arm and rail wheel in the back there. So that actually sits within the base because the issue you have when there's like a rack and pinion system on top of the wheel is that there's going to be uh, like pressure on certain areas of the wheel when it's rotating because there's no support on the top of the wheel. 
So obviously on the dual action hidden blades with the OTFs, we have the there's a disc on top where the design logo comes through um, that actually supports that wheel from both sides. But because there's like this rack on the top, it's going to stop there being any support on the top of the wheel. So what you're going to see is kind of twisting in the wheel. So what I did to combat that is I actually um, made like a countersunk piece to the wheel. So you can see how that's like a hole in here. So it's going to actually sit in there. And if we get rid of this one too, you can see that to double that effect, I've added like a, a extruded little kind of gearing spacer. Uh, uh, <laughs> bearing spacer, sorry. Um, so this way, it's it's kind of going to sit inside of it, which is pretty cool. So that way it's going to sit in there and you shouldn't really get any torsion or twisting of that wheel system, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, obviously this wheel is going to spin and that is going to push this pin back and forth. And this pin is going to be connected to this straight gear. So obviously there's going to be a screw going through that hole. And that will push this uh, back and forth like that, as you can see there. So it's going to be pretty awesome when this is all done and dusted. Obviously here's where your band's going to attach. Your ring system's going to come through here around that wheel uh, through here. And it's going to be fed out this gap in the front, which you can see it runs through this channel right there. So that's where your string's going to come out and go to your finger. So overall, it looks very nice, looks very aesthetic. This piece here just covers the pins, because obviously when the screw heads are sticking out of here, it's going to intervene. If I just had a flat case, it would hit the top of that. So what I did um, was hollow out the inside of this so those uh, screws can move freely in there. The only other major change I made since the last video I did uh, was I've made the centerpiece of the gears bigger, so like the pin bigger. So obviously um, what I was talking about before where you get torsion between the gears is if this is too thin and there's too much wiggle room between the, the pin and the gear, you get twisting of the gears and that creates way too much friction, uh, especially in a gear ratio like this where it's uh, 1 to 32 that any type of twisting action of the gears will result in too much friction and it will not rotate. So what I've done is made all of these pins bigger. So I think before they were three mil, now they're, uh, let's have a look here. Now they are like five and a half mil. So they're a, a decent size bigger. This way it's wider. It's not going to have as much torsion. The gears are going to be less likely to bite on each other and it's going to have a nice smooth uh, action there. And the other thing I did was, if you remember on the first gear here, this one was a lot smaller. I think it was only like a five tooth gear or something like that. But what I found is that there was just way, 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 way too much torque um, in order to spin that one using that straight gear system. So obviously when this is moving, um, because that gear was so close to the, the axis point, it was really struggling to push that. So what I've done is made this gear bigger. As you can see, that's why it's going into this uh, straight gear there. Um, and what it's going to do is essentially create less torque and it will be able to move that gear a little bit more freely, which is what we want. Okay, so that's pretty much the, the, the system that we're going with. So I've started printing all these components, which is really exciting. And... Um, yeah, well, we'll pretty much soon, next episode, I'll be showing you the 3D model, uh, 3D printed model, sorry, and you'll be able to see this in action in real life. So hopefully that'll be the final video of this series. And then if it works well enough, we can go into a production model and you guys can buy one of these, which would be really cool. So obviously this is V2. Um, and yeah, so pretty exciting stuff. Really happy with it. Looks really nice. And yeah, I can't wait to see this thing in real life functioning. So, okay. So now the issue that I was going over was there's a bit of a dilemma. Well, I'm uncomfortable that this gear is going to be enough to hold that blade in the locked position. In retracted position, it's fine. But in the locked position, uh, I've got a feeling that if you gave this a few good, you know, stabs to something, it might push it in. A little bit because the teeth might jump so on the gear so i'll be trying to think of ways around that obviously i talked about i think in part two i talked a little bit about a secondary locking system something in here that will hold that blade out just in case the geese uh, the teeth on the gear fail sorry 
Um, now, obviously, you guys have thrown a few ideas at me. I had someone say, like, a ball bearing idea, but that ball bearing idea wouldn't really work because it's, it's not actually providing any locking stability. Like, it's just essentially locking it using friction and not locking it using, like, a substantial... Um, lock that's going to block the track so that's why we can't have that that's not going to work um but i appreciate the the thought and the idea the other option which i really really liked was someone suggested a worm gear system so i'm going to show you what that is so we can just punch that in on google and i can show you some photos but what it looks like is this so this is a worm gear system so you can see obviously we're not using a motor um we're using our gearbox to spin this but this is the piece uh, this this long gear, if we bring this up a little bit bigger, this gear here is what will replace the this gear here, okay? So we're going to be replacing this regular gear with a, a worm gear, which looks like that. So it's kind of like a cylinder with uh, like a, a thread along it, kind of like a screw. And what we would do instead is instead of having the teeth on the blade on the side, like you can see here, we would put them flat across the bottom. So that it would be like a jagged uh, straight surface along here. And that way this worm gear, when it rotates, will push that in and out. So it might mess with the ratio a little bit, um, but I'd be interested to see how that works. But I've got, this would be like way, way more reliable um, in terms of locking power and I think it's probably going to be the best alternative if I think of something else I'll show you guys but for now this was the idea that I like the most I'm sorry I can't remember who it was that commented it but um, shout out to you whoever it was uh, but yeah this would be really awesome so teeth like this gear along the the middle part of the blade and then this worm gear here would be replacing this one so it would still spin and still push it in and out but what that means is if there was like a direct force or impact to the blade, like if you were to stab something, um, it's going to provide a lot more um, locking power because the it's essentially a flat edge against a flat edge that is not rotating in the same plane of motion. So um, that's why it's so much stronger. Because if you were to push this gear in, it's not going to have any impact on the rotation of this gear really. Whereas if you push this blade in, those teeth are going to want to rotate that gear. So it will be a lot, lot more uh, sturdy. So I'm thinking of doing that. Obviously, I can't be bothered changing all the gears right now. But I will definitely address that probably in the Mark II version of this hidden blade. So, But for now, we're just going to test it out with that, see if it works. And then we can try that worm gear system. All right, sweet. So that pretty much covers everything with this. Uh, you should see this in the next uh, part of the series, uh, all 3D modeled and, and in real life, which will be exciting. Um, but yeah, so the only other thing I wanted to show you in this video was the hidden blades that I'm going to be selling. So if you've been following my Facebook page, like I said, uh, you guys will be seeing those uh, ones up there. But essentially, this is what the the V1 hidden blade looks like. So you can see we've got V1 Mark 10 hidden blade because this is the 10th uh, 3D printed variation that I've done. So you can see it looks real clean, looks real nice. Here's some photos for you guys. Very, very nice design. I'm really happy with how these came out. This is the box that it's going to come in. So in the box, you can see up here we have the ring. The ring has like a nice little triangle um, design on it. So you have the hidden blade. Uh, you have your straps, so your arm straps, and you have your repair kit. So in your repair kit, you have four of the, uh, the blade elastics, so they're, they're called the mini elastics on the kit, and that's the ones that shoot the blade in and out. We have two of the large elastics, that's the ones for the lock tabs, and then we have a sandpaper sheet. So why you need the sandpaper sheet, uh, there's the outside of the box, is because um, the blade is square on the tip, and when you snap off the the safeties on the blade, you essentially have um, like the pointed blade. So you need the sandpaper to make it nice and sharp and pointy. So yeah. So on the box here, you've got the model of the hidden blades. Uh, obviously, all made in Australia from all Australian components, and then you have the the color and the the model. So black S, so black single blade on that one there. So I'm be selling black ones and I will be selling grey ones as well and they will come in either single blade or dual extended blade which you can pick um, on the website when I upload the shop link 
So I'll show you what the grey ones looks like. This is a grey dual extended blade, so you can see really, really nice colour. Uh, slight difference on the the writing on the back of the blade, but yeah, it looks really, really nice. This is what I was talking about. You can see it's like a square tip, so you can actually cut that off and then use the sandpaper to make it nice and sharp and clean. So yeah, so that's the two colours that will be available, uh, black and, and grey, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, in terms of sale date, I'm not 100% sure. I'm just fixing a few bugs in the design at the moment, and then we should be live. I'm guessing probably within the next day or two, I will release the shop link on YouTube and on my um, Facebook page. So yeah, if you're really keen to buy one, keep an eye out for when I post that. And yeah, guys, awesome. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Also. If you haven't, please go check out the Folding Combat Axe video. Like, I really want that one to get some more love. Um, it took a lot of time and a lot of effort for that one. So, yeah, if you guys haven't seen that, please go check it out. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, please feel free to like, uh, comment, subscribe, leave your thoughts and feedback. And, yeah, guys, see you soon.